Now as we look at the beard here, we're seeing a variety of uh, different colors. On the sunlit side, we have uh, the warmer colors. And on the shadow side, we have the cooler colors. And then a variety of different colors in between. And of course, uh, this is something that we introduced into our painting in Chapter 7. As we paint the beard in this chapter, especially this uh, area in the middle, I want to try to mix in some uh, different warm colors and cooler colors, uh, brighter colors and darker colors to uh, show a little more depth and uh, definition. So let's start with this 14 pixel opaque. If you'd like to follow along, you can open the file Chapter 9, Fisherman Face. And to see what our painting will look like at the end of this chapter, you can look at uh, Chapter 10, Fisherman Beard. We'll start with the uh, area of the mustache. And uh, as I always do, I'll look uh, to my reference image for guidance. And I'll just take note of some of the different features I'm seeing. Like I'm seeing these brighter areas. The shape of this curl. This curl over here. And now we'll start to uh, add a little more detail to this area. I'll sample this color right here. And with my brush almost straight up and down, I'll uh, add a few uh, brighter strokes to this area. Maybe sample here and add a couple of strokes over here. Fill in this area a little. Sample. And with my brush uh, fairly upright, adding uh, more detail. I'll go over here, sample, and add some more hair detail. And uh, remember, the harder you press, uh, the more paint that's going to be transferred. We can add some more highlights down here. And of course, everything we're doing will be refined with a blender. Let's go to a clean blender, and as the name would imply, we'll blend these strokes together with the uh, underpainting. I'll use more of the side of the brush to blend. And then the tip of the brush where I might want to add uh, bristle texture. Let's take a step back and we'll compare. We'll look at our original and we'll continue to add some more uh, detail to this area. Choose the 14 pixel opaque and we'll add a few more highlights. Let's add a few more cooler brush strokes to uh, this area. Another stroke here. And maybe a few darker strokes to uh, suggest uh, the chin underneath these hairs here. Another look at our reference. And I'll blend that in a little. For another perspective, let's reverse our canvas. And as I look at this area, I think uh, I want to see a little more um, randomness and maybe a few brighter highlights. It's looking too, uh, too neat, I guess. I'll go back to uh, an opaque painter, uh, this time a 19 pixel, and I'll just uh, work this area a little more. You can see by the bristles in my brush stroke that uh, I'm using the tip of my brush. I kind of like to see the bristles when I'm painting hair. Couple more strokes. 
and I'll uh, do some more blending to uh, reduce the over strong texture that I'm seeing. Brighten this up a little. And a little more refinement. And I think we're looking pretty good with this area. Let's go ahead and speed the video up so uh, you'll get a sense of uh, the flow uh, of the process. I'm using my clean blender to refine and reshape. Back to an opaque painter, sampling and painting, adding detail as I go. And this video that you're seeing is sped up 350%, just painting and blending. Working this curl with the blender. Adding a little sunlight to this area and blending. For those of you who like to paint animals, like me, you could use uh, these same brushes and the same techniques to paint uh, animal fur. I do have some future tutorial projects planned that will uh, involve painting some different kinds of animals, uh, like birds, with the uh, mixer brush and the smudge tool. Remember as you paint uh, that the brush pressure you apply will affect your brush stroke. The harder you bear down, the more paint that will be transferred. I said before that I really enjoy uh, painting beards with all their natural curls and all the little highlights, uh, the reflective quality of the hair. Lots of opportunities for creative brushwork. And as you uh, paint with the opaque painter, you don't really need to worry that you're not selecting just the right color. Uh, if you're a little too bright or too dark, you can always uh, blend it in or use the fade command. Or uh, if you're too close to the uh, underlying color, uh, you can always just choose uh, another color that's a little brighter or a little darker. You'll notice that uh, sometimes I'll paint a certain area over and over, just sort of uh, working it till uh, I get a sense that I have something that I like. I've always thought of traditional painting as something like sculpting in stone, no do-overs, or at least do-overs that aren't uh, all that easily accomplished. Whereas digital painting is more like sculpting in clay, you have the ability to sculpt and re-sculpt, add and subtract. Digital painting is, at least the way I do it, is a process that uh, allows you to sort of zero in on your target and occasionally miss, which is something that I like.
painting uh, with the mixer brush uh, the way we're painting here I think is sort of a stepping stone to painting from scratch onto a blank canvas. It's still photo painting because we're starting with a photo and we're adding paint, uh, adding brush strokes to the photo. But as you can see, I like to give myself freedom to disregard the photo, uh, to be a little creative in the way I apply my brushes. So maybe you will uh, choose to use this technique or your own techniques as a stepping stone to freehand digital painting, or maybe as a stepping stone to traditional painting, if uh, that's how you choose to express yourself. Certainly the things you'll learn about light and color and form, uh, the vision and style you develop uh, as you paint uh, on your computer uh, can be applied to whatever medium you choose. One thing I will say is that if you don't uh, feel comfortable just yet uh, adding paint with the opaque painters uh, the way we are here, you may just want to work with your clean blenders and then uh, add detail with the uh, wet painters. You may find this a little easier as you begin uh, to paint portraits with the mixer brush. In this way you can rely on the photo a little more. Adding some highlights to this sideburn, blending, adding detail to this area. Zooming out again for a wider perspective. Working the edge of the beard where it meets the cheek. Now working the sideburn on this side and the edge of the beard right here. A little more detail right here. Some broader highlights with a 19 pixel painter. And now some uh, refinement. And just for the heck of it, some loose hairs here, even though we'll be reworking this after we've done the background. So I think we're done with this uh, chapter. Let's uh, take a look at where we started. And this is the result of the work we did in this chapter. So we added uh, lots of detail uh, to the beard, reshaping certain areas, adding highlights and colors uh, in the form of brush strokes. The total time spent to paint the beard in this chapter was maybe an hour or so. There may be some things that we'll want to change as we move forward, uh, both with the beard and with the face and we'll have an opportunity in an upcoming chapter to uh, further evaluate our painting and then uh, to make some uh, refinements. In the next chapter, we'll look at painting the clothing of our subject, his hat and his shirt. 